Is this thing out of focus? I can't really tell. Now it shouldn't be. Right? Nope, it is. Okay, focus on my hand. Okay, there you go. Get that high definition of my hand. Now bring it right here. No, come on. There we go. <laughs> Good afternoon by the time I'm recording this. Um, I want to talk about The Flash Season 2. Um, so, The Flash Season 2. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm still, I just woke up an hour ago. I'm trying to get the gears, the gears rolling here. Um, let's see, was this show even good? Yeah, it was pretty good. Season 2 is pretty good. So the big plot of The Flash Season 2 was that uh, from the end of Season 1, uh, of the finale of Season 1, uh, there was the, the death of the reverse Flash because Eddie killed himself. Uh, so Eobard Thawne is dead he's erased completely from existence and because of that uh some timey wimey thing happens and basically uh it was probably it was probable that eobard thawne uh created the timeline that that show the entire first season was on um and then what he died not that the timeline erased i don't know what the thing was i'm just kind of theorizing here uh that timeline was erased and therefore a black hole was created uh and we don't know what it was too we don't know what that singularity was uh, until the the writers confirmed it somewhere between season one and two, and we find out that it was a portal to the multiverse, and so that was that portal was to Earth two, and so now uh, we find out that there are definitely more metahumans. There's doppelgangers of uh, people from Earth one, you know, our Earth, or the, the Earth that the show is on, um, and basically uh, the show defines it as I don't know if this is the, the way the comics define define it as either, but. Basically, the show defines the multiverse or the different Earths. Uh, it's Earths that vibrate at a different frequency. So, right now, if it's basically if uh, where I'm, the Earth that I'm on is vibrating at a certain frequency, uh, that means that somewhere else on um, a different frequency, something else is right here. It doesn't have to be this my house and my basement and this webcam and and this microphone. It's it could be something completely different. But it's just, it's not visible to us because it's not vibrating at the same frequency as uh, everything in this room is. I know it's confusing, but that's the way that the show defines it. And so that's the reason why uh, different Earths exist is that you can, you can uh, break a dimensional portal, or the dimensional barrier, and you can run to a different Earth. Basically, you're vibrating at a different frequency. Um, and that's actually a plot device used. I'm not going to go into the uh, detail on that. It's just, it's a cool, it's a cool little detail. So all that having been said, um... We find out that there's a new big bad, and he is like Arrow uh, season four with Damian Dark. Okay, and uh, you see that he's going to be the big bad. He's a speedster, and uh, he's the Blue Flash at first, and then we find out that his name is Zoom. Uh, Zoom, he is one scary motherfucker. Oh my God, is he? He is terrifying. He's a terrifying villain because he's he's psychopathic. And uh, he just, he does not care who he kills. Uh, we find out later that he wants the Flash's speed. That's that's his main goal. He wants to be faster because, um, well, spoiler alert, kind of early. This is going to be a spoiler for season two. Um, basically, uh, he's dying because he wanted to be even faster than he already was. And so he made a, a serum, Velocity 9, and he injected it into himself. And uh, it made him super fast, but it was killing him. And so now he needs uh, more speed, I think, to counteract it or whatever, the, whatever the, the show said it was. I don't know, but he wanted more speed. He wanted to be faster. And so he was looking for the flash speed. Um, and, yeah, so uh, Zoom is the, is the big bad, and he is terrifyingly amazing as a villain. Um, I won't say exactly who it is yet. I want to re retain some of the surprises of, of the spoilers of season two. Um, that's the big plot. Other than that, at the end of season one, uh, it's kind of left vague because the jump between one and two uh, is in real time. And so 
we find out that the the entire Team Flash is kind of disbanded, it's fallen apart. It's it's mostly just Barry working alone, and um, and so he has to like gather up all the all the old teammates and, and help stop uh, people from Earth Two, the the villains from Earth Two on Earth One, and we find out that people from Earth Two, the villains of Earth Two, the metahumans, are actually uh, sent there to kill the Flash, or t- at least to take the Flash. I don't know if they're there to kill him, but um, that's their goal, is to stop the Flash and give him to Zoom. They're all working for Zoom. Zoom has an army on Earth, too. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the plot. And so now, uh, after the first episode, everyone's uh, back in back in business with Team Flash. And then we find out that there's a, there's a rogue element that gets resolved pretty quickly, and that is Jay Garrick, which is the Flash from Earth, too. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's it's um, the one with the the metal hat, and he's got the the shirt or the leather jacket in this case, the old style jeans and the and the lightning or the feathers or whatever going across in the, the metal hat. It's that Jay Garrick from uh, the Silver Age of comics. Uh, it's the original Flash, and this guy that plays him, Teddy Sears, is actually really he's actually got that look to him. He's got that like uh, I'm a I'm a uh, Senior or not a senior citizen. I'm gonna I'm a grade A American citizen. You're welcome, ma'am. I'll be here all day to help save the day. You know he's got that look to him. He look, he looks like a good uh, Flash. But then when they're like, okay, uh, he doesn't have a speed. I was like, oh come on. I just want to see him do awesome things. You know I just I want to see him be Jay Garrick and uh, he had his moments to shine. He was okay. Um, you know, I, w- I wanted to see more of Jay Garrick because I wanted to see two flashes of stop and uh, zoom together, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, okay, so let's go into characters. Bear, uh, Grant Gustin, Barry Allen, same, you know, dorky kind of flash, but he's obviously, he's grown up a lot, and um, he's matured so much from the first season because he sees that so much shit has happened, so much shit that he's unaware of, that, like, his mom's death was, was always supposed to happen, and that, uh, if he messes with the timeline, it's he's he's gonna mess everything up. He's he's grown so much. He he knows how to be the Flash now. He's very good at being the Flash. The only thing, uh, the only thing I didn't like about uh, season two with the Flash as as the character was that uh, it's always the same cliche story where uh, every episode is about the Flash getting faster because even though he claims in the intro every time that he's the fastest man alive, he's never the fastest man alive, and that kind of that's always bugged me. Um, every episode is just about him getting faster. Uh, in this case, it's fast enough to beat Zoom. In season one, it was fast enough to beat the Reverse Flash. Now, I'm not sure who's faster, uh, Reverse Flash or Zoom, uh, at least before uh, Barry takes takes down Zoom. Because I think, personally, I lean towards the Reverse Flash because uh, Ebard Thawne was never actually beat by the Flash. Eddie had to kill himself. And so I think... The Reverse Flash is probably faster, I think, also because he had Tachyon Enhancement, which we found out later in Season 2. Uh, Tachyon... They, did, they never explain what Tachyons are in the Flash series, but I think... Because I've watched the, the movie The Watchmen from Zack Snyder. Um, tachyons are particles through... Let's see, hold on. There's a, there's a good definition for this. Hold on, let me think of it. I think the way they define it was Tachyons... Or, uh, particles in which we perceive time. Uh, I think that's what it was, and so... They never explain that in season two and um, or in season one because it's introduced in season one. They never explained it, but I think Tachyon Enhancement um, allows uh, the Reverse Flash to time travel so efficiently and so fluidly. But at the same time, I think Tachyons in the show are what gives the Reverse Flash his powers. I don't know if that's true or not because, like, uh, Earbard Thawne, remember, without that Tachyon device, he wasn't able to run fast. And so I think um, I think that's what it was. Uh, I think the Reverse Flash was faster than, than Zoom and the Flash. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, they the Flash always, his thing was, I'm trying to get faster. That always kind of bugged me. It was a silly thing that they always tried to do. Um, still, though, uh, I liked the Flash in Season 2 a lot better than the Flash in Season 1. Or uh, Barry Allen from 2 than 1. Um, because he's grown up a little bit. And not so much that he's more serious. It's just that I, the dorky side of him, I, I said this in the season one video, that dorky side of him kind of, it's a good Peter Parker. I'm, I, I know a lot of people agree with me on that one. It's definitely a good Peter Parker, but like a Barry Allen, um, he's not like a sarcastic asshole, but he's, you know, he's kind of 
supposed to be sarcastic, you know. And I get it. It's you know they're trying, they're doing different things. It's their show. It's whatever. So I'm not gonna let that bother me. But the thing is, is in season two they stopped doing that as much, and I actually appreciated that. So that's a good, that's a thumbs up for me with, uh, with uh, the Flash's or Barry Barry Allen's character development. So good job on that part, uh, in my opinion. Then you have like uh, the uh, supporting cast, Cisco. I like that. Um, in season one, he was the one who named all the villains, and I think it was a really cheap but really uh, efficient way of getting the comic book villain names, you know, because um, otherwise, in like in a modern day, these villains, uh, the metahumans, would have never gotten their names to be so cheesy, and, and some of them are pretty cheesy. Uh, I, 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 I'm drawing a blank still on some of the, like, uh, um, what was that, Dr. Light? You know, I think I think that was one of them. Uh, Captain Cold and you know, Heat Wave. I keep I keep bringing the same like two or three up. Sorry, um, I'm drawing blanks here. But like they're cheesy because Cisco is cheesy as a character in season one. In season two, uh, I I think it's like everyone else who's naming the villains, and it's not Cisco because Cisco actually disagrees with a lot of the names, and it's funny. Um, they're doing a good job, and now they're actually exploring. Uh, Cisco's powers in season two, and that's really awesome because he's vibe. Uh, Cisco Ramon, I don't, I don't remember if his name was actually Cisco in the comics, but he's vibe. He's vibe from the comics, and basically he can uh, breach a dimensional barrier at will. He can see other dimensions. He can see other timelines, and uh, let's see. I don't know if telepathy is his thing. Um, I don't think it is. I think, I think he just um, sees past the dimensional barrier and. Uh, sees other timelines. Then you have Caitlin Snow, uh, Danielle Panabaker. Uh, she is very interesting this season because she finally got back with Ronnie in season one and then she lost him again in season two. And then she is with Jay Garrick. Uh, you know, that relationship develops a little bit in uh, season two. But once again, we'll talk about that. And, you know, now she's just, she's just an emotional mess. She's terror. She's just God, shit sucks for her. Shit, I feel for her. I really do. I feel you. I feel you, girl. I really do. Um, and on top of that, because of Earth 2, we see that uh, Killer Frost, ever since Cisco, from our, our Cisco from Earth 1, uh, goes to Earth 2 on the episode where everyone goes to Earth 2. Not everyone, but uh, Flash, uh, uh, Cisco, and Harrison Wells from Earth 2. We'll, we'll talk about him in a second here. Um, when they go to Earth 2, and Cisco sees like Killer Frost, you know, obviously that's Caitlin Snow. Caitlin Snow is Killer Frost. And they they did it in a way where Daniel Panabaker can still be on our side, um, can still be on Team Flash without turning evil. But uh, sh Cisco like pretty much fears that Caitlin will turn into Killer Frost, will turn evil because her doppelganger is evil. And uh, that's a really interesting element because um, her saying in season one was always, uh, fire and ice or something like that where Ronnie was fire and Caitlin was ice. Uh, you know, it's like, it's like they're yin and yang kind of, but it's not yin and yang. It's fire and ice firestorm for Ronnie and then killer frost for Caitlin. That's how it's always been. Um, yeah. So I, she's had really interesting character development this season and she definitely shit sucks for her this season. I feel for her. I, I really do. But Daniel Panabaker, she does it well. She does a really uh, good job of this one. Now I said it in the last video of the flash. Um, in, in uh, the season one of the Flash video, uh, they needed to find a way to keep Tom, Tom Cavanaugh on the show. And while Tom Cavanaugh is still on the show, he's not playing the same character. Uh, he is still playing Harrison Wells, but remember, he's Harrison Wells from Earth 2. And that's not the same Harrison Wells from Earth 1. Because um, obviously the real one died and uh, the imposter was Eobard Thawne. He was playing Eobard Thawne in season one. And so now he's, he's playing an actual Harrison Wells from Earth 2, and he's pretty much just this huge egotastical dickhead from Earth 2, but uh, obviously he saw he soften, softens up a little bit. Um, his whole goal in Season 2 is to find his daughter or get his daughter back from Zoom. That's why he's helping in the first place. He, did, he, really much, he pretty much couldn't give a shit about the team. Um, he wants his daughter back, and he will do anything to get his daughter back. Um, that's the whole, that's pretty much his character in season two and he'll, he'll be a total asshole. He'll kill anyone he needs to, to get his daughter back. And obviously he needs to work with the flash to maybe like, it's possible that, okay, excuse me. It's possible that the flash can help me stop zoom to get my daughter back. So I'll help them out. 
Um, but when Zoom just always gets the upper hand on the Flash, you know, okay, I need to side with Zoom in order to get my daughter back. That's it's very interesting. Um, it's a very interesting character perspective. You know, it's the same character pretty much. It's Tom Cavanaugh, but it's very interesting, like dark side of uh, of Harrison Wells that we haven't seen yet. Um, just Tom Cavanaugh always turned it up, always stealing the show, always gets the one-liners in season two. Not so much season one, but uh, season one, he was more of a show stealer than he is in season two, in my opinion. But nonetheless, just, God, Tom Cavanaugh is amazing. Such a step up from Yogi Bear. Such a step up. Now in season two, they're, uh, they're teeing up the whole uh, Iris West thing. Um, I'm sorry, the Iris West and uh, Barry Allen. They're starting to tee that up. Uh, in the beginning, Barry was dating someone, uh, Patty Spivett. And I honestly thought, because the CW is the CW, that they were, because Patty Spivett went away when um, when she finds out that Barry uh, has secrets to keep and that he wasn't being forthcoming with her. And so she goes away. There's too much shit. She's already been captured like two or three times by uh, metahumans and Barry won't like come clean about what his involvement is or whatever the case is. She finds out later that he is a Flash, okay, because he confesses. Um... And she never comes back. And I honestly thought the CW being the CW, um, they were going to start teeing, uh, you know, they were, they were going to plant the seed for Barry and Iris to be a couple finally. And then at the very end, Patty was going to come back and she was going to steal Barry away. I'm very proud of the CW for not doing that. That's a very smart move. And we'll talk about the whole Iris West thing uh, at, at near the end of the video. Um, but yeah, she, um, uh, just a very smart move on the CW on the CW's part about not like making another love triangle. They did a very interesting twist on like a love circle. I'll I'll get into that in just a second here. Um, but yeah, Iris West she uh, she's involved with Team Flash. She now knows that Barry is a Flash um, since the, since the end of season two or season one, I mean. And um, yeah, she's just she's not really a damsel in distress as much as I thought she would be. I think maybe like once or twice she was, but she's actually a pretty good, uh, pretty good character in season two. She's very strong. She's very, she her purpose pretty much is to keep Barry grounded, um, and that along with like a side purpose of uh, there's a new character in town, Wally West, and so might as well, I'll start talking about him now. Uh, she is supposed to pretty much bring together the family. Uh, Joe West, Iris West, Wally West. All the Wests are now under the same household. And Wally starts off as being reluctant to want to talk to uh, his dad and his sister. More so his dad, though, because his dad, uh, him being a detective, should have known that he had a son. And uh, he never did. That's why in season one, it was just Joe and Iris. He, he didn't know he had a son. Um, and his ex-wife died, which is Iris's mom and Wally's mom. Uh, their mom died in season two and that kind of is it like it forcefully unites them as a family but wally is still reluctant on joining them and that's very it's a very interesting that part of wally's character is a very interesting uh it's very good i like i like the arc of like wally being reluctant to join the family and then finally when he does join the family you know now they're all like hunky dory they're happy we're all we're the west family now then wally um his his character takes an interesting turn i wasn't it's a good concept, but I just think the way it was executed was kind of poor. Um, basically, in one of Wally's like rebellious before he like before he comes to terms with joining the family, you know, he um, is like is doing drag racing, and uh, in an accident involving one of the metahumans, the Flash uh, Barry Allen, of course, saves Wally. And ever since then, uh, he was put in the hospital. Like nothing serious happened to him, but he was put in the hospital for checkups, or whatever. And he's, he was grateful to the Flash, and now he like he feels compelled to do good things because the Flash does good things because the Flash saved his life, and he sees that the Flash now saves other people's lives, and he's a good guy. And uh, he had one meeting with the Flash that Joe set up because obviously Joe knows Barry because they're pretty much father son. It felt a little too forced in my opinion. I it was a good concept, but they should have taken a little bit longer to develop that. Um, that's. It, it needs to be done because I have a feeling that they're going to do Wally West um, with uh, the future seasons. They're going to do like the, the Kid Flash. I don't know, I don't know if they're going to do the Kid Flash or just the Flash. Who knows what's going to happen there. Um, but yeah, it just it felt a little just too forced. I, I wasn't a fan of the way that they executed it. It wasn't, it wasn't the kids acting. It wasn't Wally West's actors acting. It wasn't the acting. It was just the way that they, they had to push Wally West in that direction. I wasn't a fan of that. But beforehand, 
huge fan of the way that they did the the Wally West storyline, but then once the whole Flash thing started with him, it was just okay. Uh, let's let's back it up a little bit. You got you just got his character in. You're not trying to make him a hero already. So let's just slow slow it down a little bit, okay? Other than that, they got some side characters. Um, they had like uh you know Patty Spivet. She was really cool. She was really cute. It's like whoever I I don't remember the actress's name that plays Patty Spivet, but she was she was pretty cute. She was good looking. Um. Other than that, she's she's a good character. She is kind of like what Barry Allen was supposed to be. She had that like that quirky sense of humor, and again, there's that awkwardness because it's a CW show. I mean, even though she's a, like a professional detective, you know, she's supposed to be like supposed to be sophisticated and a detective. She she's awkward and she's dorky, and that's okay to a degree. But you know, it's a CW show. What are you gonna do? And plus, she's the she's one of the main love interests for. Uh, for Barry in the show in the comics. I don't think she ever was but in the show she yeah She was one of the main ones for season two then you have uh, like uh, Jesse quick who is the daughter of Harrison Wells on earth Two. She doesn't really like her dad because of just he's an asshole. That's just how he's always been apparently um, Jesse quick is a speedster and uh, at a certain point later on in the, in the season um, of the flash season two Wally and Jesse are both struck with a second particle accelerator that uh, is created. Uh, I guess we can start talking about spoilers. Basically, because uh, Zoom, who we find out to be uh, the Jay Garrick that we've known up until this point, we find out that he is actually Zoom, and he was posing as a hero to gain their trust. He's basically like a double agent. Um, and so, basically, uh, Zoom wants to flash his speed, and he takes it. Barry, in order to save Wally West's life, uh, Barry takes Zoom's offer, and uh, Zoom takes. Barry speed and now zoom is running rampant zoom can do whatever he want he takes Caitlin snow hostage um and now in order to get the speed back uh they need to remake the particle accelerator explosion this is very flashpoint paradox easter egg it's, it's very easter eggy uh because that's how the flash gets his speed back in uh the flashpoint paradox the comics and the in the, in the animated movie um basically part particle accelerator is uh remade and there's a small little explosion. Uh, Jesse and Wally are both struck with it, and it's kind of like, okay, they're both speedsters, and because they're the youngest of the team, uh, of the of the entire group at this point, they're the youngest, and so their fought their dads want the, wanted them uh, safe, so they put them in a safe room, and they're smart enough to get out, and so they got out, and the acceleration or the particle exploded or whatever, uh, or whatever I'm trying to think of here, it hit them. And you're like, okay, the seed is planted. They can now be speedsters if they wanted to. That's their explanation. That's like them kind of shoehorning the idea of them being a speedster in the show. And nothing wrong with that. That's just now uh, they're possible of being speedsters. That's They can be that now. And so now, um, I've already I've already said it, uh, basically the Jake Eric we've known is, uh, we find out that he's actually Hunter Zolomon. Hunter Zolomon. See, how do I want to say that? Zolomon? 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 I think I'll go with Zolomon. He definitely, he's hes one of the reverse flashes. Uh, he is supposed to be the reverse flash, but they, they uh, the show can do whatever they want with that character, especially since he's from Earth 2. Um, yeah, they uh, were tricked by Hunter Zolomon. Um, and the entire team was, um, had the, the entire team had their guard let down in that he, they, he said he was Jay Garrick. And he obviously wasn't Jay Garrick. Um, he just stole the Jay Garrick name. Um, and Hunter Zolomon, like I said, his entire plan was to steal uh, Barry's speed. But on top of that, it was to conquer the multiverse. That's Zoom's plan, is to conquer the entire multiverse. Not just Earth-1. He's already done Earth-2 and not just Earth-3. Uh, he's talking like Earth-4, 5, 6, however many Earths there are in the multiverse. He wants them all. And we actually see in, in episode 222 that Zoom has a metahuman army. And I was actually surprised by the way they executed that, by the way. Small side note, the, the metahuman army is like, is I think it's touched upon in, I don't know if it's 222, where in the end of that episode where it's teased and then it was 223, the finale, where they're taken down, or if it's 221, the end of 221, and then in the beginning of 222, they're taken down. By the way, the end of one episode they're shown. And the beginning of the other episode, the next one, they're already taken down. Like, we don't even see the fighting. I was surprised that they did that, but then they wouldn't have been able to fit all of that action. There's no way. It was clever the way that they did it, but at the same time, they 
it was kind of like a big letdown. I wasn't, I'm not, I'm kind of, I'm not picky about how they did that. I just, all right, whatever they did. All right, cool. But anyway, um, going on to the end of the season now. So basically what we have going on is Zoom uh, has Barry's speed. Barry has to get his speed back. Uh, in order to do that, they recreated the particle accelerator explosion. Um, when he gets struck, seemingly Barry uh, vanishes or vaporizes. And what he, what happens is he's stuck in the speed force. And so basically he has to learn uh, how to control or how to get his speed back, or how to want to get his speed back. And uh, he has to know who he is as the Flash. And so when they finally get him back, now he's he's like more ready than ever to, to stop Zoom. And uh, a long story short, they beat Zoom, and Zoom, this is very interesting. This is a very interesting setup for a possible future season. Uh, Zoom actually turns into the Black Racer because Barry doesn't take off his mask. Barry, like, rips his mask on the side just enough so he can see, uh, like, just a part of it because that's how it really is. Uh, Zoom, if you've noticed all season, he has a full mask covering his full face. Uh, most of the Flashes have that, like, that... It's just uh, past their nose is where you can see all their stuff, all their, their mouth and their chin and all that. And so that's like a nod to that part of the comics. Uh, he rips off like part of it on the side. And so basically when the time rates, that's an interesting concept they explored in season two. Time rates come by, they fuck Zoom up. And he turns into the Black Racer. Uh, the Black Racer. He's got the white and red logo now and he's, he's also got the red lightning going on here. And I don't know what they're going to do with that. It's a very interesting setup, though. They set that up very well. Um, they beat Zoom. And obviously, if they don't kill Zoom, it's just like it's it's realistic. Uh, it's realistic television where if you don't kill Zoom, he's just going to get out. He's going to terrorize your life. But they did it in a way that's very convenient. Time Wraiths came by and killed him. Barry didn't have to kill him. Time Wraiths did. That's such a convenient plot device. Um which is, I'm okay with that. It's not a bad thing, but they needed to kill Zoom if they didn't want him reoccurring. But he was a very good villain. And um, I wanted to say this earlier. Zoom was a very, Zoom was a badass villain. Zoom was so much more badass, but not because, like, there was an actual, uh, like, uh, a gap between how badass Reverse Flash was versus the Zoom. Uh, versus Zoom. It's because Reverse Flash had, like, had this this simple goal and he wasn't like psychotic he was just insane in the way he was doing it reverse flash Ivar Thawne he wanted to go home and he needed the flash to do that he needed the flash to go home because his speed was basically it was messed up and um he couldn't time travel and reverse flash needed the flash he needed the flash um zoom needed the flash just for his speed and once the speed was done uh, at the beginning of the season I thought this uh, Zoom could have just killed the Flash. Once he had his speed, Zoom could have just killed him. Um, but we find out that obviously Hundred Zolomon was insane. He is psychopathic. He's he's just a he's a lunatic, and so he keeps trophies of he keeps victims, uh, prisoners. That's what he does, and so that's very that's a very convenient thing. That um, okay. Anyway, uh, basically Zoom Zoom didn't have a need for the Flash, and that's that's why I think he was willing uh, to kill anyone to get who he wanted the flash he was willing to kill anyone reverse flash like at least had some decency to like stealth and and uh blending in and that's why like he was a very cunning villain reverse flash but zoom was just a very deadly villain and that's why i gotta i gotta tip my hat to uh to teddy sears um that whole thing where being jay garrick was uh was he, he had that look to him he was like i'm an american hero type look and then we find out that he's actually like an insane, just a psychopathic, brutal, just a murderer. That's very, uh, oof, I give Teddy Sears a lot of props, man. That's that's acting right there. That's good. And he played that, that psychopathic villain very well. I, That's good stuff. I did not see that one coming. I really didn't. So hats off to you. Okay, so the only thing that's left to talk about is the love circle. So uh, when I what I said when I meant the love circle was at the end of season two the very last thing before uh well right before the very last shot of season two um it's iris and barry talking about giving it a shot like okay everything um ever since you w you woke up from the coma the, the season one um has told us that you and me are going to be together 
And so why, why not? Let's give it a shot. I'm, I'm growing feelings for you. Let's give it a shot. And Barry says, yes. Iris goes in the house. Um, and Barry, um, as much as he loves her, did it, he? the Flashpoint Paradox is going to be a, a thing for season three. And I'm very excited to see how they do this. And that's the CW. Uh, now it's a side note, the love circle thing. That's a side note because uh, finally, Iris and Barry are together. Uh, dude, Arrow... Uh, uh, Oliver and Laurel, they were never like officially a couple in the present day, like as the Green Arrow and the Black Canary. They were, they never did that. Um, and I was really surprised. They're like, okay, Barry and Iris are going to be together. That's awesome. That's, that's cool. That's, that's how it should be, you know? And then they'll just keep doing the Flash stuff. Uh, but then <laughs> they hit you with the biggest curveball anyone could have ever, no one could have ever seen. Uh, Flashpoint Paradox is going to happen. And that's, they have to explain a lot of things to the fans um with arrow and legends of tomorrow maybe not legends of tomorrow because it's like a time traveling show uh with alternate timelines and all that stuff they have to do a lot of stuff though for arrow because arrow should be affected unless we're talking about a different timeline where the timeline that we've always been on arrow season one two three four flash season one and two legends of tomorrow season one this whole timeline of the CW verse, um, if the only thing that happens when Barry goes back and saves his mom is that Barry just disappears from that timeline. It's basically like Barry just, he doesn't like die when I say disappear. He just, he's, he disappears. He's somewhere else now. He's in a different timeline, different universe, whatever. I think it would be valid if um, they just continued on like that, where Barry isn't able to help them out. Uh, like, Whenever uh, Oliver needed Barry, I'm trying to think of the words to say this. Uh, it's it's very it's very confusing what I'm trying to think of uh, as far as like saying it out loud. I, what I'm trying to say is, if Barry doesn't die, but he still like he still goes somewhere else, he's just not on that timeline anymore, and so the timeline would continue as usual. But now a different timeline is created because he saved his mom. You know the Flashpoint Paradox timeline. That's what I'm trying to get at. I think they'd have to explain that to the CW fans. Um, Either just by letting us know that the that uh, Arrow is still going to be the same show, no difference in timeline, nothing. The timeline doesn't get affected because Barry went back. Um, obviously, the Flash is going to have its its new timeline with Flashpoint, and the Legends of Tomorrow they can they can do whatever they wanted with that timeline um, because it's it's a time traveling show. Um, it's they have so much possibility. For the Flash season three, uh, maybe Arrow season five. Though I doubt they're going to do anything for season five because if you saw my Arrow season four video, they they can't afford to kind of tinker around with that stuff. Um, yeah, they just they have so much potential for Arrow se or uh, Fl uh, Flash season three, but they it's a it's a very fine line because they have to. They don't have a choice. They have to make the Flashpoint paradox. Like, this really fucked up timeline. They have to do that. They can't, like, make it uh, the adventures of Barry and his mom because he's not the Flash and Barry's mom is still alive. They can't do that. They don't. They can't afford that. Um, they have to make it, a, like, a really fucked up, uh, like, a dystopia. They don't have to do, like, a dystopia, but they have to make it, like, somewhat messed up. They have to make it bad so that he realizes it, you know? But not to the point where it's like, okay, you know what? Uh, my mom's a bitch. I, I want her dead again you know they can't do that you know and i know that sounds kind of cruel and like cold but it has to be something extreme that makes it so like uh barry realizes that he has to go back to the original timeline he has to let his mom die because if i don't shit is going to stay fucked up and that's what i'm talking about there so um yeah a lot of potential for season three for the flash and i'm very excited to see how they do that they they it's a very fine line with how they have to execute season three they don't have a lot of room for error they have to do it just right in my opinion but i think i have faith in them i think they'll do it right guys in the end um it just shows that um unlike arrow season four uh a show can make a big decision that isn't a stupid decision they can do the flashpoint um granted it was a season finale so we don't know what's next until Oct uh, october and so um they can make a big decision like a show changing decision um and not have it be a stupid decision so arrow please take notes uh fix yourself uh on the note of the flash though season two was just it was phenomenal the villain was amazing it was it was uh not a huge step up but it was definitely a step up from the reverse flash 
and that it was how am I going to beat Zoom? Nice step up from the villain. The plot was pretty simple, but it was still uh, it was still convoluted enough to where uh, it made for interesting television. Um, I guess um, I'm kind of shaky on on what I'm going to r- rate the Flash. Um, it's still uh, it's still a very good show to me. It's a very very good season, second season of the show. I won't say it's better than Arrow season two. I think Arrow season two um, was I think the prime example that the second season can be better than the first season. Um, but while the second season of The Flash was probably on par with Flash season one, I'm not sure if it was particularly better. I think certain parts of it were definitely a step up. Um, I don't really think, I can't really think of anything that was like, that was such a step down from season one that it's going to alter my decision of uh, what I'm rating the show uh, or the second season, I should say. And uh, I don't know, I guess with that being said, uh, Flash season two, I guess I'll give that one a nine um, out of 10. And it's just, it was a good season. I don't, like I said, I don't know if it's particularly better than Flash season two or season one, uh, cause Flash season one had that like, this is a unique, it's a, it's a brand new show and we're, and we're finally getting the Flash, hooray. But then, you know, now we're kind of like all used to this whole metahuman thing and uh, now they have to do something interesting and they did. I think probably it's on par and I don't remember what I rated the Flash season one, um, like out of, out of ten. I don't, I don't, I don't remember what I rated it. Um, but in my heart, take away the number system, just in my heart, I feel like they're probably on par with each other. They're, they're, it was pretty good. So I guess that's, that's just how I feel about the Flash season two. Okay, so what's next? Uh, I'm gonna record Legends of Tomorrow uh, season one. I'm gonna talk about that one. The minute I stop recording this one, I'm going to talk about that one. Um, so yeah, stick around.